G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's episode, I'm jumping back onto the 57's chassis. Gonna be doing a bit more welding and putting in the rear cross member for the four link. And we're also gonna be updating you on what's been happening with the, the Nissan 300. And we may also have a couple of uh, vehicles for sale. So, hope you enjoy it, stick around. guys so before we jump on to the 57 let's just have a bit of an update with this Nissan so bought this Nissan 300 uh, a few months back it was one of those impulse buys saw it on eBay thought oh that looks cool cheap I'll get it and yeah then you find out afterwards that no nah, there's a whole lot more work needs doing than you thought so anyway I have been doing a fair bit on it as far as the mechanicals go uh, went ahead and Pulled the front of the engine off, replaced the timing belt, uh, did the water pump, uh, changed all the plugs, you know, just normal servicing stuff, oil filter, air filter, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's running really sweet. Now, when I first got it, um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't stay idling, it, it kept shutting down. Um, so, actually, we'll start it up and we'll see what she sounds like. Running fairly smooth, you know. Got a nice little note to it, the V6. Obviously the choke's on at the moment, she's warming up. But um, this is a non-turbo edition, so it's Australian delivered, not an import. And from what I understand, uh, the Australian delivered were non-turbo. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure plenty of people are going to correct me in the comments. And um, yeah, so we, apart from you know getting the engine running right and everything, I've been around, done some rust repairs, fixed some rust in the top of the door on the uh, the boot lid, etc. And also the front um, the front bumper, uh, which is a fiberglass aftermarket one that was broken. So. So it's a bit of a work in progress. I mean, um, the other thing we fixed was the dashboard. All the dash was all really badly cracked from uh, sun. I think the car, to be honest, I think the car had actually been parked out in the weather or in the sun or elements for probably maybe 10 years. I think the last rego was 2013 from memory. Um, anyway, um, to me, it, it looked like basically the water pump had gone and, so, and they parked it up because that's all I could find that was really wrong with the car stopping it from being used was just the water pump so as soon as you put water in it just ran straight out the bottom so yeah so anyway that's all fixed now and I'm basically thinking about what I want to do with it uh, with my other projects and everything I'm just because I've got so much to do and I'm just doing it on my own I'm sort of thinking I might leave the Nissan where it is now now that I've sort of fixed the major stuff um, and got it running okay I might actually put it on the market and sell so if you, any of you guys are interested let me know I'll be putting it up on eBay and I'm not interested in making a whole bunch of money out of it. I just want to sort of get back what I put into it which is the cost of it and the parts and everything so even if I don't make anything for my labor I'm happy so that's the that's the Nissan and um, just another thing that I might actually be putting on the market is this ute because again having so many projects and you know doing it my, on my own on my own I'm sort of thinking yeah I might let this ute go too so this is a um, 1974 XB uh, Falcon ute it's actually a factory V8 factory 302 V8 so it's a K code and uh, she's um, comes with the original matching numbers engine but no gearbox and um, yeah they come with the you know with the guards which have been acid dipped and the bonnet which has been acid dipped as well when I say acid it's not really acid I think it's chemical dipping of some other sort um, 
but she's got a bit of rust, you know, like she's got a fair bit of rust in the back of the floor. But I've got a fair few other panels from another ute which we wrecked, so uh, if anyone's interested in that, just let us know in the comments. Um, again, it, it's actually up on eBay at the moment. And again, I've just, I'm just advertising that for what it owes me. I'm not interested in trying to make thousands of dollars. So if you do jump on eBay, you'll find that. And um, yeah, trust me, I'm only trying to get back what I put into it. So yeah, so that's about it. Um, haven't really done much on the coop, apart from you know where we left off last time. Just been playing around with this Nissan. So I think it's time to let this one go so I can get back and focusing on these two and also the four doors, so. Yeah, all right, well, we'll jump straight into this chassis. I've got to um, actually uh, detach it from the frame table, tip it over the other way, and weld the, uh, some places along the bottom. We've got, a, we've got places along the bottom of where the, reinf the chassis reinforcement kit was put in, and we've also, we've also got to finish welding underneath the driver's side where I did that repair, so we'll get into that next. So now we've got the chassis flipped over, we can see what we need to do. I've got a few old dags which need to be ground off. Um, we've got to weld around these uh, fish plates for the strengthening uh, kit. So there's three of them on each side. And then I've also got this repair which has to be done. And um, yeah, it looks pretty ugly, but <clears throat> it's fairly straightforward. I've got to grind a bit of old, old uh, work off here. Who knows what that was, but we're going to grind it all off, we're going to clean it all up. I'm going to make a plate that actually slips under this one and then comes to about here on the steel dowel. And then I'll be able to do what I did on the top side, which is weld the two plates into the steel dowel. So basically mold it all into one and then plenish it off. So I'm um, going to also put, you know, a couple little fish plates in here, here uh, and, and here. So. Um, Apart from that, everything should be fine. I might do what they've done on the other side, which is they've welded uh, like a doubling plate on there. So once this is all done, I might just do something just to replicate the other side and put a doubling plate through here just to add extra support. Uh, yeah, so that's about it for the underside. And then it'll be a matter of um, cleaning it all up. And I'm thinking about putting some black epoxy primer on it and um, taking it from there. Yeah. Oh, and then of course the other thing which I forgot to mention was um, uh, seeing if we can get this uh, cross member in for the four link too. We could probably get it in while it's up this way. It might even be easier because it, it technically has to go in from the bottom anyway. So um, we'll get it, get all this welding done, get that patch done, and I'll uh, probably put it on time lapse, and we'll race through that.
right so we've got the uh, chassis strengthener kit welded in and uh, I'm just down to this last repair and I've got my plate all made so we'll go ahead and weld that in All right, and that is it for all the repair work. Way more than I thought there would be. But anyway, it is a pretty old chassis, so 63 years old. So I'm not cooling this down with air. I just feel, I just feel a bit more comfortable just letting it, letting it cool down naturally. Um, last thing I wanna do is cause anything in the chassis to be brittle. I have no idea if I know what I'm talking about or not. Obviously I don't because I had to say that I don't know if I know what I'm talking about. But anyway, there it is. Yeah, I've welded it down the, the seam there, just the same as they did in the factory. Actually, 2023 welding, 1957 welding. A little bit hit and miss. <laughs> but anyway, should be all right. I'll plenish that all up and um, get this edge, this edge all nicely beveled. That's why I had the round rod in behind it so, and, and had a gap between the edges so I could really penetrate into that round rod and fuse the two edges together and then that'll still allow me to plenish that off and give it a nice rounded edge. Finished the modifications, and I've just been going over this chassis with the, uh, you know, with that Scotch Bright wheel um, that you that you have, that you use for getting paint and rubbish off. And I, uh, I pretty much knew that I'd probably need to sandblast this, but I thought if I just go over and remove a bit of the paint, it'll make the sandblasting process a little easier. So that's the next step. I've decided that I actually want to uh, blast it and get it in black epoxy before I carry on and add the cross member and the mounting brackets for the shocks. Um, mainly because this cross member is all nicely, you know, it's all nicely powder coated, you know, it's all very, very cool. And I thought, you know, it'd be a shame to, um, to have to blast and paint that for no reason. So I'm gonna do the chassis, then I'll mount that in, put the bolts in, and then I'll just be putting a couple of tacks and I can always, you know, just spot them up a little later. So that's what we'll do. We've got the Frenna crane here already to hook up. So we'll get it hooked up. We'll take her outside and um, hook into it with the blaster. All right, that was an effort as usual. Never really that keen on sandblasting, you know, getting all hot and sweaty and out there in the sun. But anyway, it's all done. 
And I think what I might do is actually jump in and install the cross member for the four link. And that basically gets held in by some self tapping bolts, believe it or not. Uh, I'm probably not going to settle for that. I'll go ahead and put the bolts in as well as I'll probably put like some little one inch welds around it. And it's a, it's a pretty snug fit, not snug, it's tight. So I'm probably going to need to get the, um, the porter power and just jack it apart, you know, the three or four mil that it needs to get it in. And then the only other thing I need to do is put these mounting brackets on for the top of the, the coilovers. And they're, you know, I've got to read the instructions there, but they're going to go in, you know, something like that kind of thing. So, as I say, we'll get the instructions out, we'll figure it out, and um, yeah, we'll get it done. But the thing about this, this Ride Tech um, four link system is the fact that this is all pre made and it's made especially for this chassis. I mean, if any of you watched the earlier videos, I did, I, I was actually going to go with a Pro 9 setup, uh, but with that setup, it's. I, it, it's a good setup and everything, but it takes a lot more work. It'd be a lot more fabricating. Basically, you're starting from scratch and just assembling a whole lot of pieces. So, as I say, this is already prefabbed, ready to just put in, and um, got the instructions and everything for an idiot like me. So, we're all good to go.